On today's episode of Locked On Suns, Gabe Guerrero from the Suns Valley Podcast joins and we are ready to debate the three biggest considerations the Suns have ahead of them this offseason. Coach, star players, role players, we'll dig into all of it. Let's go. You are Locked On Suns, your daily Phoenix Suns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are back. This is Locked On Phoenix Suns. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Brendan Clean, a credentialed media member covering the Suns for the past seven seasons and the host of the Just Basketball Show wherever you get your podcast. Thank you so much for making Locked On Suns your first listen here on this Wednesday. The off season keeps rolling. We'll be here for you every step of the way. We are free and available everywhere, including YouTube. So hit that follow or subscribe button wherever you're finding us. Get a new episode in your feed every single Monday through Friday, all through the summer and beyond. Become an everyday or get locked onto the Phoenix Suns with me. Today's show, guys, brought to you by FanDuel, the official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 straight into your account, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Joining us here on Wednesday is Gabe Guerrero of the Suns Valley Podcast, returning guest. Got to tell you, Gabe, to kick us off here before we get into some of the big offseason questions for the Suns. We talked, I think the biggest point of contention last time you were on is if the Suns could get to 50 wins. They got to 49. I was pretty close to there. I, I, I feel like I almost convinced you, and then I ended up being pretty close to being right there. I'll give you the one win. It was 50. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 50. We'll round up and make me feel Just better like about Booker's myself. like Booker's 49 points. He scored 50. Would have had 50 if Anthony Edwards hadn't uh, taken matters into his own hands on that last play. But okay, so mm. Frank Vogel, his status is depending on who's talking or which fan you ask or which media member you ask. He's either for sure coming back or absolutely fired and uh, anywhere in between. But what do you think the Suns should do when it comes to Frank Vogel, based on everything we saw in the regular season, obviously the sweep, and given the options out there, where's your head at as far as how this team should go forward at the coaching spot? I feel like they have to identify first, are we keeping all of three of the big three? If that's the case, which I hope it is, talk to them and ask them. Is Frank the guy, this report that came out, was one of you having to hold back laughing in his face when he allegedly screamed at you all in a fashion that allegedly you felt was unnatural and not him? Is that real? Do we need to get rid of him? You know what I mean? I, yeah. I think that's what you have to do. And if they say yay keep him or, or, or get rid of him. If, if they say, no, we're, we're fine with Frank, keep him. Yeah. And that's going to be a tough, bitter pill for a lot of people to swallow if they keep him. Okay. So yeah, you have that report, right? Which I think where, where that came from, if I could just get a, even a little bit of an answer of, of where that leak came from, I feel like that would tell us a lot. Was that, was it one of the stars? Was it somebody lower down on the totem pole, some role player who's just kind of being a jerk, frankly, if they're not you know, uh, involved that much in the team's success or failure and they're just leaking to be whatever? I don't know why they would. Is it an assistant coach who's feeling like, I want that job? Or I, it's, it's very odd. And I don't know why the stars or their agents would go so far as to do that when, to your point, right, they could just walk into James Jones or Matt Ishbia's office and tell them they don't want Frank Vogel to be the head coach. So that report coming out and how it did is very interesting. And then you had this thing from Mark Stein today in his newsletter that was like basically the idea being that the Beal flare-up with Vogel, I believe there were multiple, right, game two, I want to say, and game four, that – there were rumors about Beal in particular having issues with Vogel predating anything that happened in this series. And that's kind of getting at what you're saying. So I think if they feel strongly enough, any of the big three, that this thing has to end, you're probably stuck already. At the end of the day, athletes, especially in the NBA, tend to get their way. 
if they're not bought in, the team's not going to succeed. Your your hands are kind of tied if you're Jones or or Ishbia there. But I have to admit, man, like I I just wonder how long you can proceed that way. You know, it's it's like you change this for this guy, you do that for this, the team fails this way, you try this other thing, and it's like you might just be stuck with the big three from a trade standpoint, and we'll get into that next, and that's the biggest case I've made for why you might just have to fire Vogel, but I'm also certainly not letting these guys like just handpick the next coach. Like You guys just put together a pretty miserable season. Why are we going to go so far in the direction of what you want? You know, how about a little bit of structure and stability here? It could go a long way and make this more of a real basketball team, which it feels like it hasn't been in a year. That's a great point. I guess mine would be more of just, do you want him fired? Do we do yeah. do I need to take this Matt Ishbia or do I, James Jones, whichever one is actually in charge, which I don't know. <laughs> do we I think need we know. I think an- we probably know. <clears throat> you think it's Ishbia? Yeah, I think in most teams, okay. if the owner actually cares, it's the owner. You know, even if it's not like Jerry Jones with the reputation for it, it I think it's usually the owner. And I think we could say for sure Ishbi is involved. So I'm gonna, it's gonna be down okay. to what he thinks. So, you know, do I Matt Ishbi need to step in and put a new coach in front of y'all? I, I just think at least them okaying the firing because if they want Frank, wouldn't that be weird? First of all, and. Do you want to get rid of somebody that they want? I just find it so interesting that all these stories came out so quickly. Yeah. But, you know, you're, you've are you got actual credentials. You write stories. You make uh, content on YouTube. You know what it's like. Sometimes you plan these things ahead of time. You say, okay, so if the Suns win – Here's I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna have these topics. If we lose, I'll have the you know, you're just preparing. I feel like somebody or some several people were prepared with salacious stories that I never heard about. I mean, some of these things are yeah. almost a little too clickbaity to believe, but I also don't want to be naive and head in the sand and trying to be like, that's not going on in my locker room because clearly something was going on. Yeah, look, I mean, you already saw it with the Stephen A. Smith book wants to go to the Knicks thing, right? Books Camp wanted that to go away because it was a stupid thing, and I didn't even talk about it on the show for that reason. It didn't rise to the level of anything that I was going to treat with seriousness, and you saw Books Camp come out through Gerald Bourget of PHNX, who does a great job as well, and basically squashed that, nipped it in the bud immediately. If the Suns wanted to nip Beal has problems with Vogel in the bud, or if they wanted to nip... um, this laughing in the locker room after the Clippers game thing, there's ways to do that, and they didn't. So I don't think it's fully a lie or wrong or anything like that. Um, I guess to me it's just part of where I'm coming from with Vogel is the dude was brought in, I think, one of his strengths, one of the reasons he would be appealing for a superstar-laden team would be he's pretty hands-off, right? He's going to come in scheme up and game plan up a team to make them better than they otherwise would be and largely sort of lead by example, lead with, hey, I'm a super competitive person. I want to win. I'm putting in the work. You should too. I'm your coach. You do what I do and we'll go forward from there. And that's kind of the, 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 the idea around Frank Vogel. So if that's not good enough, if that doesn't work, I guess, again, I just come back to like, well, what are we looking for here? What would be a better thing? Is it just a different personality and you roll the dice all over again? I want to know that it's going to be a better coach who the players get along with better, who's going to put them in better position to succeed. And I don't think Vogel's the best coach in the NBA, but I think you could end up doing a lot worse. I mean, just ask the Bucs, right? They they move on from Budenholzer. All of a sudden, they hire this first-timer and he craps the bet a little bit to start the season, gets fired at, at, at midseason. So that that could happen to this Suns team if they're not careful. I think if you're Ishbia, you need to look at yourself as well and say, of the problems that we've diagnosed on this team, and he, only he would know, only he, James Jones, and Frank, and maybe a handful of the players would know, was Frank the one agreeing with the big three? It almost feels ridiculous to call them a big three. We got to find some other... Let's call them. Let's call them the mid three. Okay, just for. I'll sake let you of, do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
I'll, I'll think of another name for myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll go right, with just that for, for right now. now. Right. Just for right now, sure, I'll go back sure. and call him Big Three by the time next okay, season starts. Okay. okay. Were, was Frank a part of this collective agreement that we don't need a point guard? All season, I during interviews, de- several different interviews, the question was posed. You know, yeah. hey, Book, how does it feel without a point guard out there? You know, you've been with Chris Paul for the last couple of years, and he's made everything so easy. And, you know, hey, Beal, um, how do you feel about real? Hey, Kevin Durant, how's, you know, do you guys think that you can all handle the point guard duties? Or-? And all of them. All season, we don't need no stinking point guard. We're the big three. We can handle the rock. We'll bring the ball up and get it to each other. And and I th- almost feel like Chris Paul made it look so easy. And I've said a lot of negative things about Chris Paul. Um, and I don't I don't want him over Beal. I like Beal better. But he made point guard duties look a little too easy. And I just feel like I've come to the realization that, you know, just real quickly on Devin Booker, we're, we're starting to call him like be legendary book, or you could call him Armani book or whatever you want to call him. Yeah. That version, that takeover version. Yeah. He can't be as consistently Armani book. He can't consistently be him without a Ricky Rubio-esque or Chris Paul-esque point guard handling the things that he shouldn't be <clears throat> shouldn't be bothered with. Yeah. If he if you can make Booker not have to be bothered with those duties, he can he can give you those 49 point performances more often. Sure. And so if Frank was one of the guys saying we don't need a point guard, then Frank might need to go but if frank was asking because i have seen a report that said he did want a point guard and was not given one until the end of the season with it but that was a two-way obvious or sorry um 10 day 10 day then how who am i to say to tell frank that it's his fault if he was asking for a point guard which i think is the biggest key to fixing the team i think certainly he thought he was coaching a different team than he ended up with you know he took the job they do the Beal trade, they do the Aiton trade, the roster looks way different. So getting him closer to a roster that suits him, just the same way we talk about getting closer to a roster that suits the big three, I think both of those have to happen. That's a great jumping off point to a conversation we want to have about the big three and about the point guard spot, so we'll get into all of that coming up next. First, today's show brought to you by DoorDash. Mother's Day is just around the corner. Treat your mom to something nice this Mother's Day with DoorDash. Moms are a gift, so give her the best this Mother's Day. Get gifts as thoughtful as she is with DoorDash, selecting from hundreds of expertly crafted bouquets to the best of tech, to self-care essentials, and much more delivered right to her door. My mom loves a bunch of local restaurants around her. She's big on uh, yoga, workout stuff here and there. She likes to just stay active tons of options there's shops there's gift cards to those shops gift cards to those restaurants customize it but make it easy on yourself with doordash get all your mother's day gifts all in one place and 50 percent off your next order up to 15 dollars when you spend 15 or more dollars on your next order now with code locked on nba that's code locked on nba for 50% off your next order, up to $15 after you spend 15 or more on that order. Order using DoorDash today. Promo code locked on. Terms apply. Today's show also brought to you by the FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 straight to your account to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more throughout this awesome sports-packed time of year. I'm looking... Wednesday night NBA odds, what do we have here? Clippers, Mavs is the big one, of course, and the Mavs are three-point favorites on the road. Road favorite in the playoffs feels like a juicy one to look at just in and of itself. You have the Clippers plus 128 to win the game. Lots of good stuff there and more. 
Wolves Nuggets might be a soft spot, a sore spot for Suns fans, but hey, maybe you bet against Minnesota to make yourself feel a little better. All of it and more on the FanDuel Sportsbook promo code locked on. Make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. All right, Gabe, so uh, we talked about the big three a little. You talked about book. I think the way you put it is great. I, I, That's the most compelling version of an argument to get a point guard that we've talked about. We'll circle back on some of those options and how they could go about doing that to close out the show. But just in terms of this big three, I've put it that I don't think there's a trade for any of these guys that's going to make you a better team. I think that's kind of the the baseline of how I feel, the basic truth of what the Suns are facing with this roster right now. Do you agree with me? Do you think you could envision a world where they get rid of one of these guys and somehow have a more championship-ready team? Or do you side more with me of this is kind of the best that they have and they just got to make do with it? I think they could make a trade. Okay. I feel like I don't want them to. I personally, if I was in charge... Uh, I would keep the big three, get a, I would do my very best to handle these three things in order. Number one, the point guard solve. Number two, a tall wing defender that can be thrown at the other team's best scorer so that Bradley Beal, a 30 plus year old who's never been a lockdown defender, but gives you great effort doesn't have to defend an Anthony Edwards when he's literally on fire walking around on the court and can't miss. And, and and so we don't have a guy like that. I thought Royce was going to be that. And then the other thing would be a suitable backup center on the cheap that, you know, and this is going to sound kind of silly, doesn't really have to be any better than Frank Kaminsky was, but I need someone that can, attempt to shoot the basketball further away than the restricted line, the restricted area. Okay. (laughs) Like I need, so those three things, that's what I would do. However, of these big three, and I hate to say it because even when he was in a Phoenix sun, he was one of my favorite players forever. Kevin Durant is the answer and it hurts because, hey, there's a lot of Kevin Durant stands out there right now that now hate my guts for suggesting it. But I'm sorry. I'm a Suns fan. I will be a Suns fan after uh, Kevin Durant is long gone from the NBA period. And we are facing exactly what we faced, Suns fans, during Chris Paul's tenure. Chris Paul came in aged. He was exquisite there was a brief respite in time where we could have moved him and still gotten some decent value for him but we paid him and kept him and he fell off of a cliff so do we want we're we're about to have that happen with Durant. Now, he could have a whole nother good year ahead of him. That's fine too. And and I would I will gamble it. If if it's me making the decision, I'd gamble it. But he's the oldest. Beal is what 31 years old. Booker is mid 20s. Durant will fall off a cliff in the next 3 years. I think that's likely. Three years before we start to see decline. I think you could get a crazy, not crazy like what we gave up, but close to crazy package for Kevin Durant, including a couple of first round picks and a viable player that that could fit the team better. And I am a little bit tired of mortgaging our entire future for the here and now. And that's a move that helps cushion our future just a little bit. Is that, is that fair? Do you have? It's definitely fair. I just struggle to find uh, if the package is kind Ooh. of along the lines of what you said, which I agree. Right? I don't think it's going to be uh, one. You know, you can already debate if the Sun should have given up every single thing that they gave up on the trade. So that, in and of itself, probably a little bigger than it than it needed to be. So you're probably not getting anywhere close to that. I don't know where the trade would be that 
checks the boxes you're talking about is sort of my thing. And we could be sitting here all day if we really went through each and every team, but you know, just from the initial standpoint of how much he makes and where the places, who would he go to that they would feel like they're a contender, you know? Um, I think it would, know, it would Warriors, have to be a what's, team. What's the best thing you're, mm-hmm. yeah, a team that thinks they're on, they're a Durant away. Right. And, and would be willing mm-hmm. to give and has enough to give up that they're not getting worse by, by going and getting him. Return to the Warriors. What's the best thing you're getting from that trade? Maybe Jonathan Kaminga, a you, the Knicks, if if he were to entertain something like that, what's the best thing you're getting there? I mean, uh, they don't really have a lot of young talent if you actually look at their roster. Return to Oklahoma City, I, I'm very skeptical that would ever happen, but maybe you get something really good there. It's just, uh, it, it's a small list and it's a narrow path. I don't think you're wrong. I think that's probably the needle you could thread the easiest. But let's talk about Beal just for the sake of it, because that to me feels like the one where you could at least just get depth, take some teams' bad salary back, and maybe get some playable players as a result and get a little younger. Obviously, he would have to waive his no-trade clause, and you're talking about an even more desperate team. Um, like To me, Brooklyn makes the most sense, as dumb as that might sound. Um, no. The Nets have Ben Simmons's contract which is expiring after this season. So the Suns could um, stretch him or I kind of doubt they would do that with how much money they already have on the books and the tax implications. They could wait till the deadline and kind of just buy him out. He could not even ever come to the team and just trade for his salary. But on top of that, maybe you could get a Dennis Schroeder. Maybe you could get one of their young guys. You know, if it's Simmons, Schroeder, and and Dayron Sharp, their backup center, who's a good rebounder and just sort of a hustle guy. It's not anything special. I get that. But that could, that could happen. Um, and I know I, I just made Suns throw up in their Suns fans throw up in their mouths a little bit when I listed off that package. But they I don't just think hear the reality is packages. like, no. But look, I think that this is exactly Gabe why I go back to like I let's say it's let's say it's the Warriors for Durant to get more into more uh, tasty packages here. Let's say they get, um. Draymond and Kaminga. Do you feel like, let's say that's what it is as far as like the real assets the Suns are getting back. Do you go into next season feeling like the Suns are better positioned to win a championship if they get that package back? I'm very like strict on it needs to be a point guard, but they can get, a, they, okay. th- there should be a couple of point guards in the draft they could get. So let's, so I, I won't Maybe. discount what you're saying. I mean, just adding Kaminga and I mean, how do you feel about Kaminga on defense? Because I know his offense has taken strides. Yeah, I think his, I mean, I think to play on that team, you got to be pretty on your P's and Q's with your defense. So I'm going to say I, I, I trust it. And on ball, he's an athlete. Better than Royce? You feel good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Better than Royce. Okay. Then that helps. (laughs) Um, and Draymond is a is a tricky one. <laughs> I mean, do you have to get rid of Nurkic if you bring in Draymond? How does that work? I mean, work? well, <laughs> yeah. But th- I guess, like, big picture, that's just to toss it out there, right? Like, that's Okay, just the... from a working pieces standpoint. Yeah. Uh, I'm a... See, this sucks because I'm a really big Beal fan. So, like, I have an inflated belief in him you know i yeah, but yeah. kaminga is really nice so I, I could see that i could see that and and the way that i think you get beal to waive that no trade clause is to be upfront and honest with him if you really feel this way and you say listen man we know you have a no trade clause but we don't want you here oh see we, that was my durant trade. On. that was my durant trade the, oh, the that Draymond was for Durant and, and Kaminga thing. Ooh. I don't think you're getting that for Beal. Right, 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 so that's a right, right, that's right. for Durant. That's for KD wants to go back to the Warriors. I'm not even sure they would trade oh. Draymond. I just don't know all their salaries in in and out. So it might have to be more like mm. Wiggins and Kaminga, and you get both of them, and KD just replaces that over there or something closer to that. But Man, see, I don't think they've got enough pit. They they're gonna have to sweeten that with picks. This sure. is still Kevin Durant. His stats are you're getting him because you think he's going to carry you to a title. If you're going to get a title out of him, we need yeah. to get 
the deal a little sweeter because that's why we sweeten mm-hmm. the deal because we were going in all in for a title. Mm-hmm. Um, that is tough. it's tough, man. It's it's just I think you look around the league and to me, you very quickly get to like put together the best case scenario of whatever the package might look like. And I even then I still think you're getting worse as a team. And, you know, it's hard to it's the same reason the Suns went all in in the first place, right? You the the level of like think about Boston. Like that's a perfect example of a team that was built with not the best of the best stars, you know, I think people have their problems with Tatum and Brown is inconsistent and all that stuff. But their 3 through 7 is about as good as it could possibly be. Brad Stevens the day we're recording this Tuesday just got announced as the executive of the year for putting together that supplementary cast. Mm. Suns aren't getting anywhere close to that. They're not getting, you know, Porzingis as their fourth best player or whatever. <laughs> and so that's how how high the Celtics had to reach with their role players to build a great team around two lesser stars. And I'm not trying to, you know, take a shot at book by saying that. The guy is not Giannis. The guy is not Nikola Jokic. The guy is, you know, not Luka. that player. He's probably closer to what Tatum is, which means you can win a championship with him, but you have to build it a very certain way. And that one of those ways is to add more stars around him. The other way is to add the role players. The Suns already have the stars. So that's kind of where I come down of like, you got to just sort of roll with what you have. But let's talk about a point guard because that is the other option on the table to help this whole thing get along. I think this might be where Gabe and I disagree the most. We'll get into all of that coming up next. First, today's show brought to you by Monopoly Go, the classic game turned into an addicting new app. We got to pause here because Monopoly Go is taking over our lives. Ever since it became a sponsor of the Lockdown Podcast Network, we all downloaded it. We're all being competitive. Look, we're sports fans. A lot of us played sports growing up, and this thing has us by the neck. In Monopoly Go, you team up with friends for time tournaments, work together to build up each other's boards, win together, get awesome prizes together, or of course, go against one another. You get unique stickers you can trade, cool new playing pieces, pieces and hilarious emojis for taunting friends when you smash their buildings or heist their vaults. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton include their own unique mini games like digging for treasure or a robot pachinko machine. And there's always new timed events that help you win big like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies. Get those bragging rights over your buddies just like we are here on the NBA side of the Lockdown Podcast Network. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go, so get off the bench and download it now free on Google Play or the App Store. Game on. Okay, Gabe, make the case for why the Suns need a point guard. If anybody is a listener to my show, they know my thoughts here. I am not sold on this idea, and I honestly don't think Mm -hmm. the best teams in the NBA really have a point guard anymore, and I don't even know what a point guard is anymore in the NBA and that's kind of the beginning of why I'm I'm skeptical but I'm willing to be convinced so what's your case I get your argument the Nuggets won last season with Aaron Gordon bringing the ball up the major- majority of the time he's not even a three he's more of a four and it but it works because you get it into the hands of Joker and then he's the point guard you know essentially and we were doing that with Nurkic and I like yeah when Nurkic makes the majority of the decisions for passing. So it just feels like the Suns went away from that a lot, but here's, here's my best argument. And I, and I think he's just not good enough to rely on if we're being blunt. No, he's no, you can't have a player that low on the totem pole, be the guy who's running your offense. I think that's a big lesson from this series. He's just such a good hub, you know, like, He's not the the passer Joker is, but I I, I like it when he has the yeah. ball. He's holding it up high. People are going around him. He's like, is this one open? It, nope, just hand it off. But but it's kind of similar to the Chris Paul thing, right? Where it's like when he lost his ability to consistently break down the defense and get to his spots, he became less impactful as a point guard, even though he has the mind and the you know passing ability to be that. I think that's sort of what you saw with Nurkic when Gobert is preventing him from getting to his spots and everything else. He and he's not a scoring threat, yeah. so you can't you don't have to respect that. I think the more I watched that series, I wasn't like, why are the Suns going away from it? I was like, oh, Minnesota's taking that away. 
And, that makes sense. and so I think that speaks to the same thing, right? That it can't be Nurkic. So that's a point in your in, in your case because that means they got to reevaluate who who that is. That's a great point, and I know to argue against myself and for you when he's outside of the restricted area, he can't score. So even if he's standing there looking to who to get it to, you don't have to guard him. You can literally chase one of the other big three yeah. members around or try to send doubles at all of them because you're, you're guarding five V four. So that's a good point. Um, here's my argument and I am willing to have my mind changed. Um, okay. The turnovers, number one, I feel like if you even just had a TJ McConnell, which we struck out over and over and over trying to get, um, or just a point guard that's good at not turning the ball over and, and getting people the ball where they like it when they like it, I think that would be so big for this team because your big three consists of a shooting guard, a shooting guard, and a, a big wing when one of those, let's take Beal. When Beal is made to play point guard, he now is doing something that didn't make him an all-star and a multiple-time all-star and lead leading scorer. So you're you're taking a remote and turning the volume down on him. Okay. From about a hundred to about 75, maybe 80 if you're lucky on any given night. So now you have a big two and a half or a big 2.25 okay now the other guy say kevin durant you double him you double him you force it out of his hands he makes a lot of turnovers anyways so he's doubled booker and this could go either way you can interchange these big three one of them is taking themselves out of the game by having to be the point guard which is not their forte one of them is getting doubled one of them might not be hot that night and you find out which one's not hot and the other one and then the other one is who you double and then you let the not hot one be the one that beats you. Sometimes they're able to figure that out. If you have someone that's having the ball in their hands and delivering it to Booker off of screens, off of backdoor cuts, get or getting it to Beal, I think you could get 25 points out of Beal again if he had someone hand spoon feeding him um and and s same with kevin Durant. so turnovers and allowing a sh two shooting guards two all-star shooting guards to play shooting guard and letting kevin durant not have to yeah you know is, is that no it, it makes complete enough? sense i, I it's, <laughs> it's very similar to your argument about you know what i mean you said it in the beginning right with booker and and vogel and the approach of how the stars feel about their playmaking versus how he might have felt or what the front office thinks. And I think the idea that you're, because I think the way you're putting it as far as reducing the star players down from their best to something less than that is different than how most fans feel as far as, like I think a lot of people are not just fans of the Suns. I just mean like people who care about basketball when they watch this team. I think a lot of it is just, well, they're messy, they're sloppy, they play with, bad pace they just need another guy in there to fix all that stuff and it, that never has really made sense to me because I think the Suns found ways around that and I think more time to gel would allow them to keep figuring that out better and I would expect next year if this whole group basically comes back together and let's say there's not even any addition as far as a point guard I think they still would end up a little lower on turnovers better in the fourth quarter more you know quicker pace and all that stuff but the idea that it's making the stars worse is a, one that I can kind of get behind a little more because I've made the case that if the Suns are going to keep this core together, which is what Tuesday's show was for me of like, is the big three good enough to contend? And if so, then what do you have to do to get them closer to doing that? One of the things, the main things I said was those guys have to be more willing to do things that are less like what star players do. And one of those is playmaking. One of those is being that that type of hub. But being, being willing and able are two different things. Yeah. I don't think they are quite as able to, to, they're probably willing. 
Yeah. Well, they did it, right? Find, just not I didn't super find well. Them able. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't yeah. find them able when they went up against the number one defensive team that has yeah. Jaden McDaniels and and just such good wing defense. Um, so so know. let me then uh, that's that's a good. Uh, I have said that they should get a point guard option, and I said TJ McConnell's name. I guess my question is, how much can you have that player on the court without? Because mm. another huge issue, right, is mm-hmm. they got out rebounded, they got out physical. Just think about you know the matchup situations they were already running into, where Carl Anthony Towns is just barricading toward the basket. Mm-hmm. Nobody, Durant, Royce O'Neal, Yusuf Nurkic, nobody really could stop him. Nurk's big enough, but not quick enough. The other guys weren't big enough, or at least let's say strong enough. And then aside from that, you're you're talking about moments in this series where it's Grayson Allen running to close out or Eric Gordon running to close out to Jaden McDaniels in the corner. McDaniels obviously is a quick guy, but just is able to force his way past them, finish over the top of the defense. If you get even smaller, I think that poses other significant issues. Like I'm not even a proponent, even given the contract that Grayson Allen just got, I'm not even positive he should be starting next year because of this size issue. So you're telling me we're in, incorporating another smaller player into this group and expecting those things to also get better somehow? That that would really worry me. So that's a big part of all along why I have felt like because of the fact that Booker and Beal are on this roster together and they're both undersized to even sometimes play the two, let alone for either one of them to play the three, you're kind of stuck with the ball being in those guys' hands and trying to add size around them. I think I have the answer for that. Okay. I do. And a lot of you might not like it watching this. Uh, I did a video early in the season, maybe a third of the way through the season, uh, where I tried to get people to understand first of all how much i love and respect bradley beal and what i think of his game i think his game is incredible when it's his game he needs to be coming off the bench brendan and it's not because he's not talented enough he's talented enough to start on 28 teams he's talented enough to be one of the top two best players on on 28 different teams It's not about that. It's about winning. And you and I are old enough to remember that bald Argentinian wonder, the Argentinian Michael Jordan, Manu Ginobili. These young kids that that might be watching this don't have any reference for something like this. There's, There's no legal precedent for putting someone that talented off the bench. But you replace Beal in the starting lineup. And I'm talking Beal is still playing exactly the amount of minutes, only staggered, so that when Book comes out, Beal comes in and runs those sets. Sometimes they're in there together. But I'm hoping that Bradley Beal turning the ball over three straight times and then fouling out and crying on the bench will be the humbling moment that he needs to accept a bench roll. Any other team, dude, you don't got to be out coming off the bench. But if if you told me, if I'm a, a Lakers fan, and yeah. one of my Lakers fans friends comes to me and says, hey, dude, did you hear the Suns picked up uh, Trey Jones? And um, Beals, Beal said he's 100% locked in to come off the bench. That would scare me as a Lakers fan. You're telling me they got a facilitating guard and Beal's going to come off the bench willingly and he's champing at the bit? That's a different team. Okay, so I obviously think we we know we would have to hear a lot more from Beal to, to know that he ever would be okay with that. If we just assume that they could convince him of it, I just, to me, it... It's probably Still too small? no, no. I mean, it, yeah. Like somebody like Trey Jones is a smaller guy. It's not that issue to me. It's just Manu Ginobili was paid like a bench player, right? And so it's like mm. if you're telling me the guy taking up that much of your cap, even if it's the same amount of minutes, like that is just a lesser 
role. You know, at the end of the day, that guy's not on the court to start games. He's not on the court with the best players quite as often. What is Grayson Allen? I maybe you could trade Grayson Allen, but I just if if they got to the point where they looked at themselves in the mirror and said, Bradley Beal, our best team involves less of Bradley Beal, then they probably not, just, not less. Not less. But, how, but staggered. Yeah. Staggered. Does that really happen? Just though? as many minutes. And he closes out the games. Mm. The Manu Ginobili system. Did it diminish Manu? No. They won I mean, five I mean, titles, did, Brendan. No, no, no. Yeah. But that's that didn't it didn't diminish. I'm okay the with Spurs. diminishing Bradley Beal as long yeah, as the Suns. Yeah, exactly. I want to build up the yeah, Suns. Yeah. And I don't care if it diminishes Bradley Beal. And I think he cares about winning so much because he's gotten all the accolades. He's made all the money. He led the league in scoring. He is he seems the most desperate to win of the big three. Is that fair to say from interviews? Um for I mean, lost, book uh, is the last game. I think book is is heard a lot. Uh, I would feel like book is is pretty ready. Book to, comes to across put as like, the... nah, we're chilling, man. Thirty six unbothered. Check out my dope suit. And I'm the biggest book fan. I'm not trying to talk crap yeah, about yeah, book, yeah. but it's like Beal is the one who's like, man, I'm just so happy to be here. I just want to win. I've been on this Washington Washington team. Like books been further Durant's got titles Beal seemed yeah. hungry and I would hope that that would lead him to accept a bench role now the money part I get the money part to me means nothing because a I'm hypocritical and it's not my money but b because that money was already tied up in Chris Paul and Landry Shamit we took no, the money guess, we were paying like, them and gave it to him for sure I'm not saying that it's like you wouldn't want to spend that much on a bench player or something like that. To me, it's just if you're paying that much for somebody, I want to get the absolute maximum bang for my buck that I can get from that player. And if you're saying that a little bit less of him is better, then I just kind of would probably go back to what can you get for him in a trade rather than diminishing him and risking pissing him off and managing the ego of that all season even if he says he's fine with it in september what if the team loses six in a row and he's sitting here like why i'm you know i'm playing 28 minutes a game i'm a all nba guy and we're losing can i please play more and mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. then does he start and i just think that's an, a very difficult personality thing not because of anything about beal just a, as any great person at any great thing would be it's it's tough to to stick with it. Um, For the record, and I'm so trying then it's to have... like, could you get a, a, you know, again, it's back to like, well, what if you had Schroeder in a backup center from Brooklyn? And, you know, it, and that kind of adds up. I know it's significantly less than what Bradley Beal is, but if you're down the road of, we need a major shakeup, then I guess to me, it's like, just make a major shakeup. But we got to wrap up. We've debated too much, too many <laughs> minutes on this show already. Uh, we will end it there. Gabe will definitely be back in the off season as we, see what happens and maybe have some actual things to dissect rather than just the guessing. Although really we have two months of guessing before the draft, but check out his YouTube channel over at Suns Valley podcast and follow him on Twitter. As you can see on the YouTube screen, I'll be back tomorrow after the Matt Ishbia James Jones press conference. We should have some uh, nuggets there to discuss. And then Steven Perjohn will close out the week with me wrapping up the series and looking ahead as well. Hit subscribe, follow if you haven't already. Get those shows in your feed and many more as the offseason rolls on. I'll talk to you guys then.